Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Retro Tech Toys. Today I've got my buddy, Link. He's uh, Green Sheet Conyer, he's my companion, and he's going to be with us today. And we are going to discuss this Power Macintosh 7200-120 PC compatible. It's got a lot of cool things going for it. It runs up to System 9.1 software, I believe, but it also runs DOS and Windows. Now, it doesn't run it on its own hardware. It actually comes with a PC-compatible card that goes into a PCI slot. These cards range anywhere from a 486 to a Pentium 100. This particular model has a Pentium 100 inside. And it's pretty cool because it lets you switch between PC and the Mac environment on the fly. You hit a button, you're in DOS or Windows. You hit another button, you're in System 7. Well, this one actually has System 8.6, but you get the picture. Anyway, let's check it out. Let's have a look and see what we can do with it. Okay, so this is the desktop environment for System 8.6 for Macintosh. Pretty much is exactly what you'd expect about a Macintosh operating system. It's an earlier operating system. It's not terribly different from OS 9 or even certain features in OS 10. You know, just your typical uh, operating system environment. This computer actually runs with 48 megabytes of RAM, and I'm using something called RAM Doubler, which doubles the effective RAM to 96 megabytes. Uh, we've got a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive installed, and what's cool about this computer is that it has an entire computer on a PCI card. Uh, this one has a Pentium 100. And basically what happens is you put the card into the slot, you install software, and the PC portion of the computer that's inserted into the PCI slot, it will share the video, the drives, and other features of the Mac. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's turn the PC on. And since the PC is turned on, I can either click a button to switch to it, or I can hit Command Enter, and it will switch right to the MS-DOS environment. So as you can see here, I've got 24 megabytes of RAM installed on the DOS card. Uh, it actually has its own RAM slot. You know, it's got the 640K of base RAM. It's, a, as you can see, a Pentium 100 megahertz processor. And it shares the CD drive and the disk drive of the Mac itself. Pretty much exactly the same as any other DOS environment. You know, I've got games installed. Let's see what we can run here. I'll give you a little demo of Doom running on a Macintosh, which is running DOS on a separate card. And uh, it also shares the sound card, it shares everything. That was Link saying hello if you heard. And it runs everything really well. I'll just give you a quick playthrough here. I mean, there's no issues. I've seen in a lot of uh, Pentium machines running DOS games, you'll run into issues like no sound or anything like that. Uh, this is actually, that's funny, right as I said that, the sound driver messed up. Let's try it again. I've actually had a couple of issues. <laughs> you see my, see my little guy's tails in the way. Oh, sorry, Link. You okay? All right, let's try this again. Yeah, I mean, it runs really well. But yeah. And like I said, there has been one or two little issues that I've been trying to figure out. Play some Oregon Trail. Let's 
play some Oregon Trail on a 1995 Macintosh computer that is running MS-DOS. I'm a banker, so let's go ahead and max out everything. Well, almost everything. We don't need to do everything. All right. Let's do it. One of my oxen's already injured, guys. Let's turn that up just a little. No, oh, we all drown. Except for me. No, oh, no. And that's it. That was a quick game of Oregon Trail. But, you know, I don't just have MS-DOS on here. I also have Microsoft Windows 3.11. Windows for work groups. You know, the mouse works. And it just works really well. Let's do what everyone wants to do in Windows 3.11. Let's play Solitaire. Just a nice, cool, relaxing game of solitaire. How about that, guys? Yep, just playing solitaire. All right. Yeah, it runs uh, Microsoft Windows 3.1. It should run up to Windows 98, but that's no fun. I wanted to run Windows 3.1. I don't have much in the way of applications on here yet. I'm going to install a bunch of things, and when I do that, I'll make another video of this running all sorts of cool stuff. And it'll run QBaser. Of course. And everyone's favorite bit of code here. Everybody's favorite little program. Oh, and I'll show I'll show you what it looks like when you reboot it. Oh no! Well, let's get out of QBasic first. It doesn't like that very much. They're like, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> Ah, yeah, and you can even reboot it. What it does is it actually shares the Macintosh's hard drive. It creates a file on the Mac end, and that file is essentially your DOS and Windows hard drive. And you can make it up to one gigabyte, but since I only have a 1.2 gigabyte drive, I made it 600 megabytes. Because I don't use the Mac uh, portion very much. So that's it restarting, you know, it just looks like any other computer. And look, you can hit command and return, and you switch right back to the Apple environment. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, you can even restart the PC. I'll show you the setup. Yeah, here's the hard drive that I set up for it, which is, like I said, essentially a file on the computer. You can set up multiple drives. You can even set up a shared drive where you can drag back and forth between both operating systems, like on the fly. 
uh, sound. You know, you can set the RAM if it doesn't have its own RAM a module installed into the card. You can actually use a portion of the max RAM. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then you can do that. Uh, you can set it to have this nice little screen fade when it fades into DOS, or you can just turn that off. It doesn't matter. You can even set DOS to auto start when you boot the Mac. But yeah, that's it. All right, you guys want to take a look inside? Let's have a look. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we will open her up and have a look. Okay, here we are. This actually comes off quite easily. The case is very much unlike the Power Macintosh 8500 tower that came after it. This thing was designed to be upgraded. It's actually really easy. There's a little tab down here, and there's a little tab down here. Sorry, I got my got my tat in the way there. And all right, you just pull the shows down and you pull this out and it comes right off. And then we're set up with the uh, looking at the meat, the bones, the soul. So this kind of just folds out of the way, right? And here you see the DOS card. I'm not going to pull it out because it's really hard to get back in because it's got a little tab here that it rests on, but this is the DOS card. This is the Pentium 100 CPU. And down in here, it's hard to see, but this is the DIMM slot for the RAM. And there are display uh, ports on the back, but you don't use those. You can plug right into the max actual display port. Here you've got the 1.2 gigabyte SCSI hard drive, floppy drive, and a, I believe it's an eight speed CD-ROM. It might be a four speed. And that's a SCSI also. Everything's SCSI. And there's also a slot down here that you could stick another hard drive or whatever you want into. Yeah, as you can see, everything kind of comes around and connects from the PC compatible card. That could, this uh, cable here connects it to the video of the Mac. And this is for the sound and a few other things. This connects to the CD-ROM drive and the one connects to the motherboard. And down here you actually have, it's kind of difficult to see. Let me see if I can tilt this. Here, you've actually got the CPU for the Mac. This is one of the few older systems where the Mac CPU is actually soldered in. And the cool thing about this case is that if you want to get down to where the, the RAM is and, and have a really good look at everything, you just hit these little tabs here and everything just kind of goes up and it just sort of sits there. There's even a little handy kickstand. Now, as you can see here, we've got the VRAM. I've got two chips in there. And this actually came without any when I bought it. Um, I took, I had an 8500, but I took the VRAM out and put it in here. And this is the 48 megabytes of RAM. And this is a battery that is easily replaceable. It just pops out and you replace the battery. Super cool. And there's your PCI slots. And there's the back of that DOS card. You can kind of see it. And this is the 256 megabyte cache. I actually put the cache from my 8500 in here as well. And as you can see, just typical motherboard stuff. We've got chips, we've got SCSI ribbon, we've got power supply, we've got a disk drive, all that good stuff. And when you're done, everything just slides back down like normal. Just pops back down. You've got a tab here to secure it in place. A tab here to secure it in place. This pops back on. And just kind of tuck everything in. And I forgot to mention the CPU that comes with this computer is a PowerPC 601 running at 120 megahertz. It's a pretty snappy little CPU, honestly. And that was the whole thing about putting it back together, too, by the way. It just snaps right back together. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, this is a really upgradable machine. Really, the only thing that you can't upgrade on it was the CPU, and eventually someone came out with a third-party um, G3 CPU. But by then, people had already moved on to other systems, and not many people took advantage of it. 
As I mentioned earlier, the, for PC compatible cards, there was a 486 card, a 586, and a Pentium 100. I'd really like to get a hold of the 486 one because, yeah, I mainly run DOS games, and I think that would be a lot better to have than the Pentium 100. The Pentium 100, for the most part, it runs everything really well, but there are a few games that just go way too fast. Like, if you want to play Draken, you can't. It's just, you hit the button, and you're zooming across the map, and that's it. You can't play it. But that's it for this computer, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.